I'm Chris from Drumify. I'm joined by our CEO and co-founder, Damien. Damien, this week we're talking about serious games, which on its service, I think for most people, is probably one of the more confusing aspects in the field of gamification and game development, wouldn't you agree? It's not the easiest one to explain, but maybe we could, we could start with a definition of serious games. So I'll, I'll go, I'll do the easy stuff. So a serious game it is a, or an applied game, as some people call it, is a game with a serious purpose at its core. It's not purely for entertainment. So we're talking things like training games, educational games, generally for like transfer of knowledge and skills, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah, it's the, the use of gamification to to yeah to to engage with people. So a serious game is the serious version of gamification. So we use we use gamification in serious games, and without uh, gamification, there is no serious games as well. So uh, I don't know if we can make a real distinction between the two. For me, they work together. For me, they work together as well. But I guess when you look at because obviously, like you know, sociologists and you know, deep thinkers try to be like. They, they want like a really hard in the sand definition and what they generally say is and what I think helps me is gamification is applying game mechanics to real life and a serious game is where you take the serious purpose and put it into a game so they're kind of two sides of the same coin so I agree with you I think the distinction's a little bit silly and a little bit arbitrary but I do think it's important to know. Do you want to talk about like maybe some of the benefits of serious games um, and feel free to sprinkle in any any of your experience in? Serious games are, are, are just a way like to bring yeah, some uh, playful aspect to like some, something, a topic that could be either really serious or even kind of boring. So it's a, it's a, it's a way to just make things more engaging for people. So like at, at the moment, like people are bombarded with uh, a lot of content, with a lot of uh, we, we are trying to grab their attention everywhere. So uh, serious games are a way to tell them, OK, now you've got something pretty uh, solid or pretty serious to, to learn about. So you will have to, to do it, but we want you to do it in a playful way. So for you, it's going to be easier to understand and easier to remember as well. Yeah, it's generally just like, it's more engaging, eh? Think back when you were at school and just getting like absolutely plowed with, you know, textbooks and lectures. Like, you no, know, my university lectures, I remember in some subjects, especially for the drier stuff where you think, actually, looking back, something a little bit more playful, a little bit more participatory, shall we say. I wonder, you obviously have a lot of experience applying serious games to, you know, the real world as we know it, but do you actually know kind of their origin and where they come from? Uh, yes, but as you are the product specialist, I would like you to uh, talk about it. <laughs> so, I mean, the, again, getting back to the sort of the, the philosophers and the thinkers and the people that like to classify things, there's probably a lot of debate about where serious games actually originated because there's evidence from like millennia ago of serious games being used in like war tactics and stuff and then even in the 1800s because obviously if you think about it when you go into battle you know you can't really learn on the job because there's a pretty high risk of <laughs> getting killed or you know getting really hurt and it's also going to cost a lot of money from a from a military perspective so i mean i guess as we as we know them today serious games were defined in like 1970 by a guy i think it's clark abbott he wrote a book called serious games and he was a researcher uh literally trying to use uh game mechanics and video game formats to help train soldiers and military specialists where obviously the consequences of making a wrong decision or whatever could go wrong uh and be really costly really there's nothing more high stakes than war um i don't think and even before he defined that they were already using like um kind of i guess they call them war games but like to, to train soldiers and stuff so that's really where it or or originated as we use them today but then now it's like if you've got anything where there's where you need a virtual environment or a sort of a, a digital proving ground where you know there's no pressure you know you can get it wrong and get that repeatability that's where the modern serious game kind of kind of comes from really that's perfect yeah well done I feel like yeah, i feel like i'm in good... school being quizzed yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is still wars in the world but i mean the modern wars are business or 
trying to compete with uh, other companies. So in a sense, like the way it's been created at, at the start we, uh, for soldiers, for army, I think it was natural that it came to the business world, like because yeah, companies are competing with each other. So that's a new way to train your workforce to make sure that they will understand that they will be ready to, to go further and to, to get like more uh, shares uh, on the markets and everything. Yeah, yeah it's uh, a war of capitalism now, really, isn't it? Yes. So yeah, yeah. I guess any anyone listening who's thinking like, oh, okay, well, that, yeah, I could, I could maybe use that a little bit more in my company. We're obviously a gamification platform. Do you want to maybe give a bit of a brief overview of like what we what we do and how we how we help create serious games? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, the way we are doing it is uh, we've got like a, a large catalog of different game mechanics and uh, gamification experiences that anyone can create, can uh, customize really, really easily in a matter of minutes. So uh, it's really simple to start to get started with Dreamify. And the main uh, purpose of it is to be is for you to like to be able to think about a concept, think about something you need for to, to boost your business be able to create it and customize it really quickly and also be able to deploy this within your company or within your uh yeah within your company you've got like all the power of uh, a good platform to uh, get you started i guess let's break that down into like real tangibles that people can be like oh, okay so like let's say like three main things that you get if you're using like a, a serious games platform like Dreamify to build your training experiences and learning experiences. Like the main benefit of a gamification platform is to engage with people. So you will get like a much higher engagement and uh, also it's, this will uh, enhance motivation. So that's really like the core uh, element of gamification when you use it for serious games. Then you will also uh, be improving like learning outcomes. So it means that people will remember what they've been uh, learning. When you do it with gamification, through Dreamify, you will be able to create memorable uh, experiences. So for example, when you want to, to tell someone about something, let's say a boring Word document that they have to read, they might not remember it because it might be like the number six uh, through the day that they've been reading. So it's not like a memorable experience. But now if you use like a quiz or if you use a game, where before the game you've got like this kind of intermediate screen that will maybe give like some additional content and explain what you want to talk about then people will remember it because this will uh, trigger emotions like get gamification and games in general are triggering emotions and that's how people can remember them it's all about like story and storytelling that's the, the main uh, thing yeah 100 percent. i mean i i can think back on a couple of training experiences i've had in sort of jobs like there was one where i worked for a furniture company i was given a four-hour lecture on where some wood came from can't remember any of it uh i was given a when i was a journalist i was given a four-hour kind of video call on how to use some systems i just had to ask people because you just can't take it in just having information smashed in your face um so yeah being able to like play through things is great and i think the main the main advantage of like using a platform like drumify all the content you can tailor so i guess like the way i see it they bring you bring your expertise in your job and then we bring the tried and tested mechanics, the repeatable success and uh, the agency services to help you as much or as little as you want. The most important is the end result and the most important is for us to be able to, to bring this added value where gamification is going to uh, create this engagement. Because when, you, when you've got like, to use a game to uh, think about something, you will step back, you will take time, you will try to understand what's going on. It's not, it's not like a passive experience. With gamification, what we are after is more like interactions. That's exactly it. It's not a passive experience, which those experiences I referred to earlier definitely were a passive experience. You know, you take an hour and a half of, you know, <laughs> just dry information and you, sw you switch off, you zone out and you, you know, you're mentally out of the game. Uh, whereas, well, there isn't there isn't a game, is there? Another last uh, great benefit is also like team building. So it means that if you are using serious games within like a company or even like an organization, we, we do like also uh, help a lot of uh, uh, non-profit uh, organizations. So uh, the, the fact that it creates team building means that when people are having like an experience all together or the same experience together, 
they will remember it, they will want to talk about it. So that's also some kind of icebreaker or, you know, like if you, if you, if you go for a serious game all at the same time, and then you meet someone the day after at the coffee machine, maybe you will want to talk about it. You will want to, say, to ask, oh, did, how did you do within this uh, serious game? Or how did you do with the quiz? And then people are talking about it. And it's even stronger in terms of being memorable. It's like when, when we did that escape room afterwards, we were on different teams and we came out and then it was like, well, how did, how did you solve that bit? Like, you know what I mean? And then there was that competitive element as well. Because that's, I think that's the, that's the big thing is like, because there was a, just to go back to the history of serious games as well, where a guy was looking at um, companies and he was looking at sort of how his teams would approach their jobs and, you know, motivation seemed to be down. But then he was also like, but people are spending so much money and all their free time to go and play like five-a-side football or, you know, their local like, local leagues like squash, tennis, whatever. They'll, you know, go 90% and absolutely kill themselves just to win this meaningless game, but in their jobs which literally puts food on the plate they're like punch in check through so it's it is i guess kind of applying that sporting mentality as well if in a business you don't have like a sports team spirit i think it, it might be difficult to go uh, to go anywhere any company you, you have to see it like a family or you have to see it like a like a sports team like each person in the company has a different skill set and it's building like a team with different skills. So it's like a football team, for example, if you take like the defenders, the, the midfields, the forwards, the striker, you need all of them to, to, to win a game. You cannot just win a game with one striker. Or so, so the, and the same applies to businesses. So that's why when you introduce gamification, serious games, and like a, a way to, to bring like this team building in a playful way, I think it's improving like the connections between the people and uh, in the company and this will help the team uh, get stronger and your company gets stronger as well. So yeah, it's all connected at the end of the day, yeah. And there's that really nice symbiosis as well because you've got like really powerful kind of like data collection and analysis that comes out of like the games through when you make one Drumify that comes up through your dashboard. It's a really good way to identify like, hmm, these guys are really high performers in this area, but maybe like, you know, colleague X needs a bit of development here. So it's a really good way of looking at like, right, how how are my teams performing? What what am I actually playing with? The advantage of a games platform like this is over time, you collect a lot of data. So not only can you analyze how your team's performing and how your team's learning, you can analyze how your game's performing. Is it achieving the desired results? Thing is, you can also then learn and try again. Like, I mean, learn and iterate. It means that you will be able to, okay, you, you, you've been creating, let's say, like a dynamic path of uh, 10 steps, 10 different steps. Just to quickly interrupt as well, just for the context. So the dynamic path is the, the game engine we've got where you've got access to all of the different game engines to create multiple levels, multiple modules. So it's essentially, you know, you can make it a long playable game or it can be like, you know, a, a massive, you know, online open course. Thanks for the clarification, but... So I just, yeah, just and, uh, uh, I know we're so into it, but you, yeah. So w w when you start like a gamification experience, you use like the dynamic path and you make it like 10 steps. Maybe after like a couple of weeks or a couple of months of using it within your, your company, you will realize that maybe people are dropping after step five. So you will have to, you, you will have like all the data, all the insight to understand, okay, people are dropping at step five, why? And then you will be able to go and analyze what's going on at step five and maybe adjust it in real time, publish the, the new version of the, of, of the, the size game and move further. And then after a few days, you will be able maybe to see that you, you get like a better completion rate, which is a way for you yeah, to just like, uh, release, test, learn, release, test, learn, and uh, adjust and make sure like you, you optimize the experience. Yeah, the way I look at it is like, you've got the, the tools of the engines work, bring the expertise, and the odds are you've got a pretty good chance of making a game that does the job and performs better than the old methods. But let's think about it in testing. Let's say you get a C plus. Well, that's very good, but maybe you can get a B, maybe you can get an A. So it's just like, you know, it's like, it's like what you're trying to do with your teams. It's constantly improving. And I, I almost look at like a serious game because it's generating the data itself. You don't need to go and, you know, analyze like the the training provider who's delivering the training, analyzing the materials. It analyzes itself. It's like, I always think of it as like a self-sharpening tool. 
let's move into some examples of serious games in different industries. So I'll just hit you with one and then maybe you could give me like like a like a like a use case example or just some just like jumping off points for people. So let's say and this will also just talk about the breadth because serious games there really isn't a subject I don't think that you can apply a serious that you cut you the that you couldn't apply a serious game to because it's kind of built into them. You're, you're literally tailoring the game around whatever the purpose is. So let's talk first of all, healthcare industry for patient engagement and education. Yeah, so uh, th that's a really good one because uh, you've got a lot of things that, you know, like for, for example, we've been uh, helping like, uh, like an hospital uh, in France where they, uh, they've been using like Dreamify and a serious game to uh, tell people about like the, 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 the issues with the smoking and tobacco. tobacco. So uh, what he created is uh, like how to quit uh, smoking or like trying to explain people what are the, the, the dangers for, for the health in terms of uh, smoking and everything. So in, in a few steps, they are just trying to engage with people, with local communities. So it means that they are not trying to tell them straight away, quit smoking, because it's not going to work. Like someone that has been smoking for the past 10, 10 or 20 years is not going to... A million people have told them quit smoking and it's not, they've not listened, so... Ex exactly, so, so that's why ga ga gamification is a good way to take them like into the storytelling, like just explaining them, like maybe trying to understand why they started smoking. And also at the after that, once you understood why smoking is not the best, even though you you know about it when you smoke, uh, they are giving you solutions. So they are giving you like different kind of solutions with different levels of uh, help. I would say, like for example, if you want to st to stop like slowly, or if you want to be like more radical, there are some people they stop smoking like just cold cold turkey done. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I yeah, know it's giving. It's give. It's just like. It's, I think like the key to a successful game like that, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I think you actually made it or worked on it, but it's like showing like, okay, look, these are your habits. These are the results. If you do this, these will be the results. And just finding the right time to say, you know, here are the strategies to get around this. You know, it's like, and, it, and, it, and it's, and it's a, I don't want to say it's an easy one, but I think especially with like, health related games and with patients it's like who doesn't want to be healthy who doesn't want to be healthier than they are who doesn't want to feel better you know so that it's just like um you know it's not difficult to connect those game mechanics to that motivation and you know have them play through and get the get the desired results really is it you you said it but the most important is the strategy so you you, you have to plan everything so you you have to just like to uh, try to define what the story you want to, to tell. So it's like, okay, shall we start with this, then go with this and end up with the solution. So it's, it's, it's like when you create like a case study, it's like, what's the challenge, then what, what are the solutions and, and then the, the end benefits. So that, that you have to go the, the same way with gamification. You are trying to take people in your story, in your storytelling, but in a smooth way, you, you, are not, you are not trying to shock people. You want, you want them to engage with your content. You want them to engage with your, your, your message. I just go, I just go and you know that as well, because you're right. It's like finding a nice way to deliver a message. And I always think you can learn, like you're telling a story. And I think you can learn a lot from looking at like the greatest storytellers of all time. So think about someone like Ernest Hemingway, whose whole thing was like, iceberg theory he wanted he only gave you like the immediate information nothing should be superfluous so i think would you say it's like a pretty easy pitfall with a serious game to try and cram too much into it oh, i'll give you an example i'm a business owner and I've, i'm wanting to onboard my employees there's obviously you know people need to know so much when they start a company and you build it up because if you give them everything nothing stays in it just overwhelms them I, I wonder if it's a temptation of people sometimes to be like just keep building the game and just keep adding stuff in and just be like oh how much can we cram into this and like tick a box it's like everything in uh in the business world or even like if it's not business but you 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 have to, to segment the information it's like for example when you are sending a newsletter if you are sending a newsletter with 20 topics in it you can make sure that people will maybe just remember one one of them so with gamification and serious game you have to define your main target, your main objective, stick to it, create the content that go with it, 
and that's the message you want to deliver. But now, if you want to deliver multiple messages, then try to think about it as making it maybe multiple campaigns or multiple uh, experiences where you can break down each topic like properly into segments and not like uh, overwhelm people. You, you, you have to, to, to be sensible. It's not because that's games that people will just remember everything. You have to make sure that they understand things, but uh, still deliver like one message at a time if you want if you want it to remain. Yeah, give it to them piecemeal kind of thing. I suppose the other advantage of that is like, we, we obviously know quite a lot from working for a games creation platform. If you're making multiple games to deliver multiple messages, you're going to learn things from one campaign to the next and just get a little bit closer to that A plus with every new, every new project, aren't you? Each experience will give you uh, data and insight. And from there, you will be able to adjust either like the, the this current campaign or we'll be able to adjust for the next one. So again, like one thing that's really important with uh, when using gamification and it's back down to the strategy as well is to be able to think about it long term. You, you are not here just to, to, to like to deliver one experience, one message. You, you, you are here to deliver like something consistent. So if I go back to my newsletter example, like businesses are sending newsletters every month, every week, or every time they want to talk about something, but that's a, a recurring uh, element. That's a recurring a way of communicating with customers or with uh, staff or collaborators. But, uh, and that's the same with gamification. Don't do it just once. I mean, yes, you, you could be lucky and it will work perfectly, but if you just do it like once, you might not get the results you, you are expecting. So that's why try to keep going, try to iterate, try to uh, think about like multiple ways to, to approach gamification, serious games within your organization. And again, like that's by repeating things that you will learn more and be, be and become better at it. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's move on then from healthcare and I guess we kind of started to move around the side of it into some more of the benefits, but that's, that's yeah. fine. Let's, let's talk about if uh, the corporate training for sort of soft skill development. So say, you know, if you were upskilling someone to become like, a, for example, a manager uh, and they were going to yeah. have more sort of direct reports, like how, how would we use a serious game in that scenario? Yeah, we, we've been using it like in different many ways. Uh, for, for example, first was to upskill people within the company. So we've been working with uh, like a national energy provider and what they wanted was to define who could become like the digital ambassadors within the company. So what we've done with them is that we created like a series of personality tests uh, to try to segment the audience and try to be able to define who could become a, a digital uh, ambassador in the company. So it's identifying talent and aptitude. Correct, yeah. It's like trying to, to get like the soft skills and uh, all the things like, for example, so we, we, start, we started it with a series of personality tests. So it was like the first personality test was taken by uh, 15,000 people. Then this gave like a first segmentation. Then we went down to uh, 7,000. Uh, then we've been us using another personality test to go down one more level to uh, 1,500, and then until we, we got to 150. And then when we got to 150, which was like 10% of the workforce. Just just from the numbers there, you've already saved so many man hours of like, you know, discussions, meetings, interviews, you know. Exactly, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. And obviously that can be applied to like, recruitment as well like out with out with a company um sorry I, I broke you up that do carry on from there yeah we, we managed to identify like 150 people that would be like the amb ambassadors of the of digital within the company like some kind of managers you know like to try to bring digital in all the different business units and the, the good point with this is that like it was like global so all the business units within the the company was taking those uh, this series of personality tests. It was a way like to identify new talents, new managers, but it was also a way like to, 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 to break the silos. Like in a company, you've got like the sales department, the marketing department, uh, and, the, and the way it's been, it's been made is that uh, those 150 people were located in all the different business units, in all the different departments. So it created like a dream team of uh, digital ambassadors, but spread everywhere so th that was the really good aspect of, of this kind of uh, 
yeah, uh, concept. Uh, was it was this mul- was this a multilingual pro- project as well? Uh, no, it was uh, only in one language because it was like a national uh, energy provider, so they were only located like in one uh, in one country. I mean, Dreamify is multilingual, so there is that there is that option. Um, there, there is the option to do. Cool. So let's let's move into like education next. Uh, obviously, corporate training and education. There's a lot of like crossover there. But let's say for like, it's obviously a very different audience. You're going from, you know, relatively motivated employees to kids who maybe don't want to be there. <laughs> like, how how would we how would we adapt things for for the classroom for uh, for that younger? It's just the same because uh, we, we we should not forget that adults are big kids and uh, gamification and games are so universal. Everyone loves loves playing. Like it's like games are. <laughs> are kind of universal and there is no borders no limits uh everyone can like if you if you go with a memory game and you've got cards that you need to flip you don't need like a 20 pages manual to understand what to do so it's uh, even like a quiz when you ask questions about something and you've got two answers it's quite intuitive and natural to understand like what to do and yeah you have to select one of the answers that's it so by bringing gamification uh, and serious games within like the, the education sector, you are just going back to the roots of the human nature. Like you, you just like uh, yeah, when when kids are outside in the pre- in the playground, it's called the playground. They are playing. So uh, that's the same. So if you can bring the the playful aspect within the classroom through gamification, that's that's perfect because people will engage with it and doesn't matter if it's kids or adults they will just want to k- carry on and keep going and and that's that's where gamification is really f- effective in terms of first creating th- this little spark to engage with people so you start the experience and then uh, bringing like amazing completion rates like the fact that w- once you start playing usually like even if you play a game of football ad- unless you you can't run anymore but when the ref is uh, whistling for for uh, like for the end of the game, most of people will want to play more. You know, like will want to keep going, keep playing. So that's the same with gamification. The 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 fact that yeah, you start something, it's engaging. You lo- you love it, and you want to keep going until the end. And that's where the completion rates are skyrocketing. So could you give me give me maybe like a use case of like where we've like put a game into into a classroom? Recently, uh, we've done a project for a school in uh, Italy. And they've been using uh, the, the games within the class, so quizzes about uh, history. And the fact that, you know, like all the schools now are going digital, kids are watching like the, the news uh, on big screens, like even the teacher now they've got like digital uh, boards. So everything goes digital. Uh, they've got uh, Chromebooks and uh, yeah, tablets, everything. So it's just like instead of going, you, you learn about the history of Italy, for example, or the history of your, your country. And they've got now to answer a quiz where they can see how they they are going to perform within the ranking. That's amazing. Like you go uh, times ten in terms of engagement and results, and also like something that people that kids will remember. It doesn't work for every subject, but I guess with history, the story's already been written for you. You just need to adapt the game mechanics to it. Um, especially with Italy as well. What a history. Um, but like. And I guess as well, the, there's an obvious advantage in there with everything moving to, to digital. You know, your textbooks just aren't going to be as effective as they used to be anyway. Um, and also, if everyone's got a terminal and everyone's on that leaderboard, because I, I, I remember when I was at school, when it was a, a lot more traditional, um, more recently than you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember the, you know, there were some kids who would just hide and, and just disappear into the back. But if everyone's playing, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit shy, you know, you're you're playing because, you know, you can play without that pressure of having to put your hand up necessarily. You know, it's, it's more, I think it's, I think it offers a more inclusive uh, kind of solution than, because, you know, I mean, I, I remember when, when I was at school, you know, there were, there were games and stuff, but again, the more outgoing kids who were going to do well anyway, just dominated the games and other people would hide and just be like yeah you, you you handle that i'll just sit here whereas it's individual experiences so each uh, each child will, will, will be able to express himself so it's not like being in a group it's like you you have to deal with it you you have to express yourself and that's where also you will unveil uh, different skills from different child 
because some of them will be like really fast on the uh, quizzes, for example, but other kids will be uh, really quick, like uh, uh, with uh, uh, logic or puzzles. Uh, so yeah, you, you, we, we, using games and gamification in general in education can trigger like different skill set from different uh, kind of kids. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can even like say, even if you notice something, say you could potentially like nudge a kid in, in the right direction or I just it just open, opens up a lot of doors, I think. So let's just recap the, the benefits and let's just, let's just pin it to three. So yeah, number one is uh, engagement for sure. So that's how to engage with people, how, how, to, how to get their attention. Attention span is... Uh, yeah, it's difficult to get to get at the moment. So with like everything like TikTok and the YouTube shorts and you've got like, yeah, it's hard to, to keep people engaged. The main benefit of gamification and serious games are engagement. So that's number one. Uh, then number two is create like a memorable experience. So it means that people will go through it, will uh, will understand your message, will, uh, will get the storytelling and they will remember it. So that's what you get when you live like a great experience, even in life, when, when you've got like a great experience, that's something you will remember. So gamification is helping to go this way as well. Uh, and then, yeah, number, number three of using serious games, I would say it's like all the insight and all the understanding that you get out of it. Like, so when you create a serious game, it doesn't matter if it's for, yeah, like a business, an organization or kids at school, you will get a lot of insight. So you are creating content, you are exposing the content to your audience, and then you can understand what, how they, uh, they've been like understanding it, how they've been approaching it. And that's how you can make your content better for the future. So that, that would be uh, the three main points you can, uh, you can get from uh, the three main benefits you can get from uh, gamification and serious games. And I'm just gonna, I guess, kind of say exactly what you've said, but in a slightly shorter way. So I think that number one point about engagement, it's giving people a shorter feedback cycle than what traditional kind of training me mechanisms are able to do. So it is kind of meeting you know, your TikToks and your Instagrams on those terms of being a quick kind of like, I'm here, I'm present kind of training alternative. So number two, you know, it's a, you, you're delivering a memorable experience. You're asking people to participate. You know, they're, they're, they're quite literally experiencing it. It's happening to them. They're not just being told. And then number three, data collection, self-analysis, self-sharpening kind of learning tool. So I guess just to kind of finish, finish thing, wrap things up on serious games. What would the, what would your first recommendation be to an organization that is looking to adopt serious games uh, and, you know, start building experience with Dreamify? Final thoughts. Yeah. So the, the, the first, the first one would be like to try to understand what the challenges are, like trying to understand what are you going to improve. So that's number one. And, and then uh, like talk to experts like us, for example, tell us what are your challenges and through our expertise and experience, we've been, I mean, we've been creating games and gamification experiences since uh, 2007. So uh, it's been yeah, more than 15 years now. So we've got like a big experience, big expertise all across the world. So we can help you find the right solutions. So that's why yeah, once you know what your challenges are, talk to someone, talk to us, for example, and we will be able to understand like how to bring like uh, those solutions to you. And then start simple again, like uh, start with one target, one objective. If you've got one, if you've got multiple challenges, start with one, see how it goes, create an experience, create a serious game, uh, see how people are reacting to it and then keep going and keep trying, keep testing. So uh, don't try to do everything at the same time start simple absolutely yeah start simple cool excellent well thank you for your time damien uh i hope yeah. everyone listening's gotten a lot out of this and if you want to learn more about serious games get in touch with us and we'll sort you out perfect thanks chris <laughs>